ready for true happiness, for deep fulfillment, for feeling alive, on purpose, and in control of your life again, it's time to be the bold, brilliant, beautiful woman you were born to be. Welcome to the Purpose Girl Podcast. I'm women's happiness and life purpose expert, Karen Rockhunt, and I'm going to teach you how to live on purpose, feel alive, and be happy in every aspect of life. I'm going to get real about my life and interview women who are living on purpose so that you can finally live yours. Welcome to the show. So I have a question for you. Do you feel like you're getting older and maybe not so happy about it? I know for me, I turned 42 and suddenly the menu seemed to get smaller. Like I I swear to God, I know that this sounds ridiculous, but it seemed like every menu manufacturer was out to get me when in reality, it was just time for me to start getting reading glasses, something I had always attributed to old people or older people, right? And of course, now the gray hairs are popping up. And I just cut my hair super short. I did it to donate my hair to Locks of Love, and it was super long. And I swear now that you can see the grays more. And I said to my hairdresser, I'm like, we've got to pluck those. And she's like, you cannot pluck them because when you pluck one, you get six more. Now, I don't know if that's true or it's just an old wives tale. But here I am. I'm someone who professes to you about loving your whole self, about body love, about loving, loving, loving who you are. And I've kind of had to face lately that there are some aspects of who I am as I'm getting older that I'm not loving. And I know that every minute I'm not loving this very natural, very normal aspect of life means that I am partially creating my own suffering, that I'm partially creating my own unhappiness. And that's just not acceptable, right? We have to be able to love all of us, including this process of getting older, of aging, and we need to be able to do it as my guest today calls aging gratefully, which I love, G-R-E-A-T right? This whole idea, it's not even about aging gracefully. It's about what would greatness look like to you, to me right now? How can we fully love and feel so good in our bodies right now? So whether it's that you are in your 20s and you're like, oh shit, 30s coming, or you've been in your 30s and you're like 40s coming, or like I turned 44 this year and I felt this huge difference between 43 and 44. And I even did that as part of my episode. If you go back and you look at my birthday episode, it was about this feeling of getting older. And so we really need to look at how do we feel about getting older and how can we make it work for us? right? So my guest today is going to teach us all about that, and you will love her. So Holly Kelly is a gerontologist. She's a fellow in thanatology, multiple award-winning author, and the founder of the Ladder Life Planning Institute. She's also the host of a weekly radio show, Aging Gratefully, which I love, which is broadcast globally on the CTR network, which is actually how she and I started talking. I was a guest on her show, and she's incredible. She helps thousands of people around the world live vibrantly, plan thoughtfully, age dynamically. And really, she's helping people shift how we feel about aging. And I really, really, really need her. And she's also a death change agent, which I'm so curious for us to really look at, because I think that part of the deal is that we're afraid of of dying. And I think part of it is we're afraid of dying with dreams in our heart and afraid of dying having not lived the way that we wanted to. So there's so much to talk about. So Holly Kelly is dedicated to promoting positive messages about aging, demystifying death, and encouraging all people to live life through their bucket list. She's also a huge advocate for personal end-of-life planning. She um, has her own approach called Create Peace, which is outlined in her Amazon number one new release and multi-award winning book, Sunrises and Sunsets, Final Affairs Forged with Flair, Finesse, and Functionality, through workshops, inspirational keynotes, consulting, and other platforms. Holly Kelly helps people around the globe prepare for the end and inspire their grand new beginnings. We have so much to talk about. So whether you are 20 and this is like, you've got to listen to this for your mom or whether you are 50 and you're like, oh shit, I need to talk about this because I'm feeling like the midlife crisis is coming on. And it, this isn't even about, doesn't have to be about that you feel like you're at the end of your life. It's how do we continue to be our best no matter what age? So I'm so excited to have you on, Holly. Welcome to the Purpose Girl Podcast. 
Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. And I'm so excited to be on the Purpose Girl podcast. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, we have so much to talk about. And everyone, you're going to want to listen until the very end because we're going to give you a couple of very specific purpose power tools about how to feel your best at any age and how to really live your best as we're getting older every single day. So Holly, let's begin with what does it even mean to age gratefully? Aging gratefully is kind of a philosophy about how you live your life. Aging is the omnipresent aspect of our life. It's something that we are always doing, playing in the background. We're aging. And Mm -hmm. gratefully is to do it great. Full is a capital F-U-L-L. Do it full. And so aging gratefully is an approach to aging and living your life the best possible way you can in embracing the aging process just as dynamically as possible. Right. This is so important. I love that you've called it that because it's, I always talk about living fully and that's really what we're talking about here is living each day completely and fully because if we're just focused on, oh my God, I am another month older, another year older, there's like a fear component. There's a anxiety component. There's a negative component. But if we're saying, okay, I'm going to live great today, what would it mean to live fully today? Or what would it mean to live gratefully today? We're embracing each day. And listen, we can look at it like it sucks, right? That we're getting older each day, but we all, we all are. And so how do we start shifting the conversation, Holly, to really embracing this very normal fact of life? Aging is definitely a gift. If you think about if you're not aging, what are you doing? Right. What's the alternative? (laughs) It's not good. And so I tell people aging is the gift of life. It is the gift you have today because if you're not aging, Mm. things are not looking, uh, they're looking kind of grim for you. And Mm. so aging is an amazing gift if you're lucky enough to be doing it. And so that's one way, certainly, uh, to tilt your perspective rather quickly. And so it's just so important that we embrace uh, the gift of aging every single day. And uh, it's, it's going on either way. And so I think it's just uh, something that we want to think about how we want that journey to look like for us, how yes. we want to approach it. And how we want to persevere that for ourselves. And what do we want to look like for those around us? What kind Mm. of aging role model do we want to be for the people in our lives? So very important. Yes, I love this so much. There's so much in there to unpack. One of my favorite questions to ask coaching clients is this. When you're at your 80th birthday party, and someone gets up to make a toast, right? Clink, 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 clink. Holly, I've got a toast for you. You know, what do you want people saying about you? What would that dream speech look like? What would it sound like? And then what would you want to get up and be able to say about yourself? And I love that question because it directs where you want to go from here until there. And so this idea of being a positive role model for the people around us makes so much sense. And living in a way that that is honoring all of life makes so much sense. So you know, Holly, that here on the Purpose Girl podcast, we're really talking about the science of women's happiness. So what do you notice about the difference between how women age, how men age? I think that women are so concerned about society's perspective of them and mm how they look in the lineup. And men just kind of are comfortable with how they are and they're less concerned more often than not. And so I think women feel that they have a need to be a certain way and that concern can cause them oftentimes more uh, agony and it leads them to being in a place that perhaps is not a good place for them. They can be depressed or maybe uh, they right. don't feel that, that that they are good enough, that they don't fit in uh, with society's rendering of what somebody is supposed to be like at a certain age. And I will tell you that 
often, you know, Hollywood doesn't do us a service hmm. of, Mm-mm. of feeling that we are just good enough the way we are. And so we feel like that we have to live up to a certain image. And so I think that we need to learn to just be good with our own goals, our own set of ideals, and that we implement them the way that makes our own selves happy. And this definitely speaks to the work that you do, is setting Mm -hmm. our own criteria for our own lives and stop looking around uh, over the horizon and, and taking in what's out there and saying, what what is my life about? Think about your own future older self and what do you mm. want to see? And instead of the outside in, look at the inside out and work that approach. Oh, I love that. I love that. I've had an image for a long time of me as a 70 year old woman and I have long gray hair. So I guess I'm going to have to grow my hair out again. <laughs> so I have long gray hair. And I have this beautiful beach house. I can see it so clearly. And all of the furniture is white, beautiful, darker hardwood floors, beautiful trim, wood trim in the house, and little, like lots of blue accents. And I'm overlooking the beach and I'm writing books. And I see and I'm I'm at peace. And I'm wearing linen. Of course, I'm wearing linen, right? I have to be wearing like a beautiful, like a light blue linen shirt and white linen pants. I can see it so clearly. And I have this image of me. I have this image of my future self and I have the external image and I have the idea she's very much at peace with herself and with life and how she's doing life and how she's done life. And so I keep her in my mind uh, and in my heart as am I doing today and being today and living today in a way that will honor her, right? And get me to, to where she is. I think that's a beautiful rendering of Mm. what everybody should be doing and how wonderful that you are embracing uh, this beautiful older version of you that you are already at peace with and you're headed in the direction of her. Mm, Thank you for saying that. It's interesting because I'm saying this to you and I am at peace. And at the same time, I was just at my hairstylist and picking out how many grays I have and not at peace about it, right? And so in my future self, I'm fine with. But in the present moment, it is, I guess, bringing up fears for me. And what you said about how we have been conditioned as women, we what we've been told we're supposed to look like. I mean, I grew up from the time I was a baby, my mom dyed her hair because she went white at 25. Mm-hmm. And so, and I wasn't around when she was 25, but I have only known my mom having dyed hair. And she still does today. And she's beautiful. And she's 74. And I've only known her having dyed hair. And so it was just kind of known in my family and household that when a woman gets older, she dyes her hair. And so and I think we're we're bombarded with these messages constantly more than men are about dyeing our hair, about wrinkles, about how to not ha- look like we've lived a day, about Botox. It's this constant, we're not good enough. And then, of course, we do look at Hollywood or social media or anything else, and it's contributing to us not feeling good or feeling good about the aging process. You know, I was reading some statistics, Holly, and what this article said is that more than one half of women believe that it's normal for a woman to be depressed during menopause. And more than one half of women believe that depression is a normal part of aging. And is that true? Does does it have to be? Or is it one of those cases like, listen, if if that is true for you, it's not abnormal, but it's not, is that really how you want to live, right? Or how do you want to live? So so what's your experience with that? Well, there is so much that can happen, you know, throughout the life course that leads and lends itself to depression. And when you think about the role of the aging journey, think about what happens oftentimes to women. So you have a lot going on there. You have, um, as life goes on, you have women age 40 to 59. Uh, We have a high uh, ratio of divorces uh, happening at that point in time. Uh, You have empty nest syndrome happening at that point in time. You have a lot of things happening as it relates to a financial crisis at that time. Uh, people are phasing 
in the workplace, uh, getting rid of oftentimes older workers and getting um, shifting into a new younger uh, workforce. So what we see is that 12.3% of women uh, is the highest group based on age and gender of any other group, according to the Centers of uh, Disease Control and Prevention of ages 40 to 59 are uh, depressed. And Mm. um, that is a staggering statistic. Uh, So, Mm. you know, it is um, a lot going on in that age group. It is not okay at all. It Mm -hmm. should not be the normal. It should certainly not be uh, the highest group uh, and 12.3 percent is a huge statistic. Uh, midlife crisis is um, a major issue. And to identify that, you know, that would be somebody uh, that has, is viewing the world as everything that has already happened in my life, the best things have already occurred. Uh, disengagement, mm. somebody that's over-concerned about their appearances, or somebody that's not concerned enough uh, sleeplessness, boredom, disconcern about anything, um, a dismal view of the future, somebody making rash decisions, so many things that you could maybe identify in other people. But uh, it is a serious issue out there. And a lot of things happen in that age group, as you could imagine. Yeah, Life really changes. It does for women as we get to midlife, right? And, 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 and in a way can, that there can be several things. Think about a divorce. Yes. Your kids oh, are yeah. gone, and you lose your job, and your mother dies. Yeah, and your body is changing. Yes, right, and yes. your body is changing. And so, because men experience some of those same things, where the kids are out of the house, and uh, but still, since women are the major caretakers of children, even though men have made tremendous strides and bravo to all of you men out there, correct? women still are the major caretakers. And so empty nest syndrome does affect more women. That makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. Also looking at the rapid rate of divorce. And I know several women who want to get a divorce, but don't feel like they can financially. So there's this other financial strain. Uh, especially for women who have kind of put a lot of their eggs into their husband's career and basket and that they've really run the finances. And then there are these body changes. Our body changes at menopause and perimenopause. I've started night sweating. Mm -hmm. And that is scary, especially because I'm somebody who still wants to conceive. Mm -hmm. And so there is so much going on in that age group. And I, I love how you said this, that it may be quote unquote normal, but it's not okay. It's not okay. No. And and so for any of you out there, if this resonates for you and this is what you're going through, let's talk about what do we need to do about it? Or if you're looking at listening to this and you're like, this is exactly what my mother is going through. This is what my aunt is going through. This is what my best friend is going through. So what do we need to do, Holly, to age gratefully? How do we shift this? Well, I think that it's very important that everybody look at their life and make sure that they are living the life that they want to live. And you know if you are or you are not. I mean, this is very important that you take a self-analysis and say, uh, you know, am I as happy as I want to be? Am I living the life that I want to live? And if not, it's time to uh, change things up and decide what you want today and where you want to evolve to. And then you start working your list. So aging gratefully is definitely begins with, uh, I would say, you know, we always talk about the bucket list and you're Mm -hmm, a big mm -hmm. advocate of the bucket list. And you and I would probably agree. And I'm pretty sure you feel the same way that uh, your bucket list is not something that is off into a far off future of a someday. There's no day of the week called someday. It is, (laughs) you know, it is now. So the first thing you do is you figure out what are these things that are missing from your life? You are the purpose girl and the happiness expert. So a lot of people, the problem is, is that they are so derailed. They are so lost that they don't even know how to find their way back. But they know enough to know that 
they're not happy. So I think it's really important that they start thinking back to a time that they were. Uh, Mm -hmm. A bucket list kind of helps you get there because it makes you tap into the parts of you that say, you know what, this would make me happy. You don't have to have a lot of money. A bucket list could be something free, like throwing a blanket on your backyard and sitting under the stars. Um, Mm. Picnic somewhere quiet. And it can be grandiose and expensive things too, and everything in between. But a bucket list starts tethering you to you. And Mm. so I think it's really important. You know, people would say, how could a bucket list get me to me? Because it's your dreams and your Mm -hmm. dreams help you find yourself. Yes. Yes, I love this. Yeah, your dreams are really your inner desires. They really it are. is your it's your inner truth speaking to you. It right? Really. It's like, "Oh, I would love to go to Greece one day." Okay, well that's your inner truth speaking to you or you look at someone else and you see that they've just run their a 10k, you know, a, a race and you think, "Oh, it must be so great to be that healthy. You think, okay, this is letting me know I want to be healthy. Or you look back at your life or there, and there was something that really brought you joy when you were a child and tapping into that. Because I find often if I just say, well, what do you want to a client or to any of you out there? It's kind of like deer in headlights. Sometimes you don't know. And so you have to go in through these other ways of saying, well, what really – lit you up and made you excited as a child or what you get jealous of other people over or what would just light you up if you put money aside, you put any sort of can't do aside, what would just be something crazy, bold and bodacious that would be so fun for you? Very true. Because because we do tend to get perplexed and it's very important to think about your bucket list as non-financial encumbered. Don't think about mm-hmm. how you can do this. Don't worry about that because I, I tell people to not have these boundaries attached to their bucket list. If you have $20 in your savings account and you want to go to Greece, <laughs> put Greece on the list because yes. that the dreams do not need to be have, you know, encumbrances. And then think about that if you want to be an actress or an actor or something like that, then maybe you find your way at the local theater and you try out for a part, Mm. play a musical instrument, find these passions, and you start figuring out how to run to yourself and you uncover parts of you that A, are yet to be discovered and be parts of you that have been covered up, uh, that, mm. that you are going to relight uh, up again. And it's a beautiful thing when you, mm-hmm. start this. you, you might find yourself in a karate class, you might find yourself <laughs> in a foreign language, uh, whatever it is, it's pretty fun. And you find yourself once again, back in the driver's seat of your life, aging gratefully. I love this. But what about someone out there who's going, I'm too old, right? Yeah, I would love to take karate lessons, but please, I'm 65. Oh my goodness. Absolutely not. You are definitely never too old. I would tell you, certainly not according to Dr. Layla Denmark, who was the oldest practicing pediatrician who retired at the age of 103 or... Oh my goodness. Yes. um, 92-year-old Gladys Burrell, the Guinness Book of World Records marathon winner, uh, Bart Bratko, the oldest flight instructor at 81 years old. I, I can tell you we are never too old. We are never not relevant Um, that is definitely why your work is so important, Karen, because purpose is at the center of a well celebrated life. And, Mm. uh, it's definitely, um, you are always constantly tilling your bucket list, adding new ones, aspiring, conspiring, and adding purpose so that when you are at that 80th birthday party, you can Mm -hmm. answer that question and say, Mm -hmm. this is, this is my toast. This is what made the last 80 years amazing. And this is what I want for every single person in this room. I want you to put this into your life so you can stand here one day. 
this was my ride. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You want to be able to say, listen, I, I did it. You can do it. And you want to be able to say, I have lived the way I wanted to live. Mm-hmm. I heard Julia Cameron, who wrote The Artist's Way, give a talk and someone said to her, it's all about The Artist's Way. I don't know if you've read it. It's all about how to get your creative juices flowing and get unblocked creatively. And someone said to her, well, yeah, I would love to, I think it was play the piano. But do you know how old I'm going to be when I learn to play the piano? And Julia Cameron said to her, yeah, the same age you're going to be if you don't learn to play the piano, right? So it's like, if if any of you out there, you're thinking, it's going to take me four years to save up money for Greece. Okay, well, God willing, you're going to be around four years from now. So you either can go, go to Greece in four years or be four years older and still not go to Greece or whatever your thing is. Or if it is acting, you know, are you necessarily going to end up as a rockette, you know, on, <laughs> in New York City at 85? Maybe not. Maybe. Maybe they'll change and maybe you will. But you can start now and you will be the same age either way. It's just, are you going to be the same age as a help, healthy, happy woman? Or are you going to be the same age feeling down, feeling depressed, feeling crickety in your bones? Which way do you want to live? There was a woman. I love the examples that you gave, Holly. There was a woman, Olga Kotelko. Have you heard of her? Mm-mm. She passed away at 94 and she held over 30 world records and she won over 750 gold medals in her age category. She was a track and field athlete and she was considered one of the world's greatest athletes. And anyone, you have to look up this woman. She's amazing. She did not start training for track and field events until she was 77. I mean, it's like amazing. And then she went on to win all these world championships and to compete and to to win medal after medal after medal. In fact, universities were so interested in her that at like McGill University, they actually studied her tissue. And what they found is though, even though she was 91, her tissues were about age 65. Awesome. Right. And she did end up dying at 94, but it wasn't like, you know, we have this idea that aging is this like over the hill thing, right? Where like you're building up and getting healthier and getting more vibrant until you're 40. And then all of a sudden you're over the hill and things are going to decline. And I read a book called Younger Next Year that is all about, I just saw that there's a younger next year for women. So I totally want to check this out. But I remember in that book, The author said that we have this idea that it's just up and then it's down in terms of our well-being and aging. And he said, instead, it's more like climbing a mountain and having a plateau where you climb and then you stay steady eddy at that plateau. And then at the end of life, it's a quick decline if you're living healthy. My parents walk four to eight miles every single day, right? And so we have the ability to keep our bodies really healthy so that there's a quick decline instead of this constant draining or aching and unhealthy. I don't know if you see that when with the patients that you work with. Oh, I mean, the, the clients that I work with, I think that some of them definitely want to know, what can I do? And the first thing that I tell them is that it's so important to change your thoughts. I mean, that's paramount Mm. is, you know, aging is a mindset and people are really surprised when I say that. And you understand the power of positive thoughts so much in the work that you do. And then we start talking about all the other things that you can do after that. But if you don't change your mind about it, uh, you are going to have a hard time getting uh, the rest of everything else on board. So Mm. mind is actually the most powerful thing that you have in your aging arsenal. And then once you've fixed that, everything else will get behind you. Got it. I mean, I completely understand mindset from the happiness and well-being perspective. How do thoughts affect the aging experience? Thoughts affect the aging experience more than you could actually ever imagine. Uh, They affect it obviously in the positive psychology work that you do. Um, But scientists have discovered how you feel about aging really, really matters. And a study published in the Journal of Psychology, um, I'm sorry, Journal Journal of Gerontology of Social Sciences, and that was funded by the National Institutes of Health, they uncovered that your subjective feelings about your chronological age 
affects your cognitive abilities and wellness up to a decade hmm. later. So this worked positively and negatively. So if you think about people that identified as feeling 12 years younger than they actually were, then years later, they were more than likely to have more confidence cognitively than those who felt negatively about their age. So the power of our thoughts really, really play into how we adapt later in life. Wow. Wow. And it works either way. It does. So if you actually thought negatively, uh, you would have a more difficult time cognitively later in life. So this is incredible. So literally, it's how we think about aging. So if you think that aging is an opportunity to get your bucket list done, to expand more, to have great experiences, to enjoy your life, then what I'm hearing you say is then that will impact how life is actually lived out, as opposed to if you think that aging is going to ruin your health and going to bring you into decline, then that actually will. Very much so, yes. Wow. Wow. So our thinking really does matter. And I know that how we treat our physical body really matters. And then I love this bucket list that actually making sure that you're living your life and doing the things that will make, bring you joy and do what you want to do really matters. In fact, Holly, what's on your bucket list? My bucket list is actually, I want to do a cattle drive. That is Ooh, something. That's that, so fun. Yeah. I'm really excited about that. And so um, wanting to go to Ireland. So I have a few things out there that I'm looking forward to doing. Mm, I love that. So how can we all make some changes today, no matter what age? Because some women are listening to this and they're 70 and some women are listening to this and they're 20. So how can we all make changes today to have a more positive experience with the daily aging? Well, I think it's very important and something that people are not aware of is that you just simply decide to, uh, and hmm. you stop with some of, you know, the ageist things that we subconsciously do to ourselves, some self sabotaging that goes on and that we inadvertently do to ourselves, uh, like, Oh, I'm feeling my age today. You know, mm, things like that. Oh my goodness. Right, 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 right. Okay. So. Oh, I even just thought of one. I'm very proud of the fact that I don't look 44. So what I'm doing in that moment is I am discounting 44 as a bad thing. <laughs> but I've been very proud of that. Well, I don't look 44. I look, you know, and I'll, people will say, how old are you? And I'll say, how old do you think I am? You know, which of course is a terrible question. But I'm pretty sure that they're always going to say younger than I do look. And so that just occurred to me, Holly, that I have been kind of dissing my own age by being proud that I'm not it. And wow. this is so innocent and yes. we don't know that we're doing it in our lives and to others. I mean, we just, this happens all of the time. And so, uh, people do this to other people. Somebody will come up to somebody and someone says, oh, it's nice. Think about this, Karen. It's nice when somebody says, oh, you look so good. That's a great compliment, right? Mm -hmm. think, think about when somebody says, you look so good for your age. <laughs> yes. <Okay. laughs> like, screw you. <laughs> but if they said that to somebody 80, mm. you look so good for your age. That's typically would be a normal thing that somebody would say, especially somebody 20 would say that mm. absolutely innocently, absolutely mm. unknowingly. That's actually ageism. And she's mm. thinking, and, and she would accept that in kindness and she would accept that graciously, but you know, it's like, thanks, you know, mm. so things like that, but we do it to ourselves all of the time too. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, we go, Oh, I forgot that I'm having a senior moment. So you're asking, what can we do today? Uh, yes. We can lose those, um, remarks that we do to ourselves. That is something mm. I really try to get people to become conscious about, and to kind of stop doing those sorts of things and just become self-aware, uh, decide, decide that you are going to uh, have this great life and that you are going to become more positive about it. Get excited about your life and aging. Remember, if you're mm -hmm. lucky enough, you're aging. 
and uh, <laughs> think about your future and uh, what's missing now and think about how you are going to add those things back to your life. Make that bucket list like mm. we talked about. And uh, the Purpose Girl is here um, to help you and work those things into your life. And if you're lost, do what we said and, and work your way back to you. Uh, find mm. those things that you love and whatever it is, make sure that you figure out what they are. And it's very important because we're talking about this and suicide rates are so high today. Mm. And, you know, I did research and, you know, I wondered because we have so much technology available and social media and we have access to so much information. I actually did research to say, okay, are suicide rates up or are we just, do we have access to more information? And the truth is they, they are extremely up. And so I say, if you are in a bad place, if you are in a place that you know is dark and not good, seek guidance, get the help you hmm. need, mm -hmm. be brave mm -hmm. and definitely reach out. There is nothing weak about that. There is nothing to be embarrassed about. It is, there's people out there that love you, that need you, that would be devastated if you, if you didn't. And so mm. uh, it is paramount that during this part of your life that is challenging, that you just get a little lifeline and get a little help that everybody needs at some point in time when life throws you too much and you get the help that you need mm. because that's why people are there and there's experts to carry you through. And so mm. I think it is paramount that if you find yourself in that place, everything that people go through, there's, there's helping, helping guidance and professionals and experts that know how to carry you through. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, so important. Thank you so much, Holly. Uh, this is so important. And if you yourself are feeling that or someone else, and does someone then go see like, a therapist or a gerontologist? I actually just realized I'm not 100% sure what a gerontologist does. A gerontologist is an expert in aging and uh, is certainly a multidisciplinary um, field. You have people practicing in gerontology in so many different areas, uh, studying the physical, social, psychological, spiritual aspects of aging and problems of the aged. Certainly for hmm. somebody that uh, would be needing help in an area of depression or something like that, I would say that they would need to contact the um, a professional in the area of psychology, um, psych, um, psychiatry, um, somebody that could help them in that area. I would, yeah. um, and, and there's so many professionals out there and if they could just seek somebody that they feel that they align with and that um, they're comfortable with, the, you know, they can do a search, they can call their local hospital. There's so many helplines mm -hmm. and hotlines out there. Um, definitely mm -hmm. don't go mm -hmm. alone and don't think that, you know, you'll just go one more day or whatever. Uh, just absolutely yeah. not. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You know, the last thing I want us to touch on is ageism or how we are relating to our elders, especially elder women in the divine feminine. We honor the elder woman as the wise woman, right? There are actually three kind of main stages of life in the divine feminine. And there's the maiden, which is the young girl. And then there is the priestess as she is contributing her gifts in the world. And then there is the wise woman. And I believe we all have innate wisdom in every bone of our bodies and every cell of our body. But there are many cultures that honor elders right? Whether the elder is 40 or 50 or 70 or 80 doesn't matter. There is this honoring. And in at least American culture, often we don't honor our elders. We leave them in a room or a place all by themselves. And people often treat elders with disrespect or as weird or icky or whatever it might be. And 
there's a huge disparity between how we treat our elders and their wisdom. And so this is something else I'm truly fascinated about as we get older is to really use every single life experience and understand that that makes you wise. I was giving a talk at a synagogue about a year ago, and a woman who was 70 stood up and she said, well, this is like nice and good, but you know, my whole table here, we're in our 70s, and so is purpose really for us? And I said to her, absolutely, because we need you living the purpose now of sharing your wisdom with us. You, you've lived it. So you know, and the whole room erupted and gave them a standing ovation, like one, you know, wanting them to know that they are wanted in the community. And so how, how do we shift that where we can, and maybe this is too big of a question for our, you know, our podcast here, but how can we shift so that we're really honoring the wise women? A lot of this does come down to ageism. And I'm so glad that you brought this question to the forefront because it is an honoring. It is a revering. And since the dawn of time, it has been paramount that the oldest of society or any culture has been looked to for knowledge and wisdom. And they taught the others how to do things. And they, mm. they were the wise. And that mm -hmm. is what sustained cultures that came after them. And so it has been so important. And in fact, I would venture to say that without that, uh, society would not have existed. And right. so this is something that has kind of changed over time. And it, it started shifting when mindset started being um, looked at differently. So if you think about like remarks that might happen, think about something like, oh, you know, we're going to go on vacation. Oh, Mima can't do those sorts of things. She's too old and feeble versus let's plan a mm. trip to the Grand Canyon. Uh, you know, Mima, she'll probably want to take in the sights on a pack mule. Okay. <laughs> so now we've just shifted grandma or Mima into a capable, thriving, non-age encumbered member of the family. We viewed her vitality as such. I think the main thing to remember is that we are creating a footprint to those around us, those listening, an entire culture that we want to shift it once again to show that the older generation which is going to be us, is a vital, contributing, important part of society. And that is paramount. And so Absolutely. I just think that even patronizing talk like, and I hear it all the time because I'm trained to teach this, uh, mm. and I, I know it is innocent, it comes down to education, but even uh, looking at somebody, and you wouldn't do it to somebody in their 30s uh, or in their 40s, uh, their 20s, but sweetie, oh, she's so cute, and baby talk mm. is something that is very uh, patronizing. And it's done mm -hmm. to be relatable, but it's something that is belittling. Mm. And all mm. these little things that make them not feel relevant and not feel respected. Right, right. When in reality, they are the people that we really need the most to teach us the most important life lessons. And for thousands of years, that was how information was passed. That was how knowledge was passed. That was how wisdom was passed. That was how stories and language and just like I said, knowledge was passed. And it is only in recent years, and I do mean recent, probably the last hundred or couple hundred that many people, we, I should include myself in that because I'm sure I've done it, disregard uh, this greatest generation. And I know without a doubt, I would give anything to have my grandmother and grandfather back for one more conversation. You know, I think about the times when I was in high school or college and thought, oh, you know, I don't have time for this or I would roll my eyes. But here they were. I mean, these were Holocaust survivors. 
they could tell me so much about survival, about thriving despite living in difficult times, about how to, my grandmother started life over again as a teenager, not knowing the language. I mean, I have so much I could learn from her and learn from her about being a woman. And so what an opportunity for us to decide we are going to do it differently for that generation. And because we will be that generation. And so this is incredible, beautiful knowledge. Holly, thank you for the work that you do. It's so important. And I love how you're able to teach all of us, no matter what age we are, how to truly live gratefully right now and tomorrow and the next day and the next day. So there's a couple of purpose power tips I want to make sure everybody got from Holly. Number one, make your bucket list, right? So write down the 25 things that you want to do before you die. And they could be big things. They could be little things. And make sure that you are thinking of what brought you joy when you were younger that you haven't allowed yourself to do. You even can think about what are the things that you love now and you want to make sure that you continue to do. You can think about the things that you regret or the things that you're jealous of or the things that light you up or the things that you think, oh, I could never do that. You want to make your bucket list and you want to start doing them. Number two is really just make a decision about your mindset. I love how you said this, Holly. We just have to start with a decision that we are going to think about aging differently, we're going to talk about it differently, and we're going to decide that we are vibrant, we are healthy, and we can live however we want to live now. And then number three, how we take care of our bodies, our minds, our fun, and how we take care of our elders is so important and creates such lifeblood for our living. And so these are just such beautiful purpose power tips. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Uh Huge honor mm-hmm. to be on the show and to mm. have this wonderful uh, conversation with you. Mm. The honor is mine. I love it. I love it. You're you're really making me think so much about myself, my own aging, my parents as they're in their seventies, and how I want to interact with elders in my community at my synagogue, and how much knowledge I really do want to get, especially from the elder wise women who have lived from so through so much. I really you're you're making me so aware of that. So thank you. So one thing I love to do at the end of an interview is to do a couple of what I call purpose power play rounds. And it's just me asking you a couple of really quick questions and whatever's the first thing that comes to your mind. How does that sound? Okay, I'll try. (laughs) Okay, here we go. All right. So when you were a child, what did you want to grow up to do? I wanted to be a news anchor. Ooh, oh, you have such a good voice for that, Holly. (laughs) And I know what you look like. You're gorgeous too. So you, that's... And it's still possible for you if that's of interest. What a shift from that to gerontology. Uh, Well, I started out as a degree in journalism, actually. And so uh, then I added the uh, degree in gerontology. So did a lot of writing and stuff like that. Mm, Of course. And here you are with your own radio show. So you've really fulfilled that dream. I guess in a roundabout way. You know, I started um, in my younger life doing uh, broadcasting and then I shifted to healthcare. Mm, mm, beautiful. Thank you. So important. And truly, you are broadcasting now and really sounds like combining these two loves. Okay, second question. Mm-hmm. Other than your own book, which of course, we will let people know how to get it and have a link in the show notes. What is a book you've read recently that you loved? Oh, I am reading You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero. Oh, I mean, you just spoke right to my heart, girl. <laughs> that is one of my all time favorites. Yes. Love it. Love it. Anyone out there who has not read that book, you absolutely positively must. And then my last question, special for you, mm-hmm. when are you going to Ireland? I will go to Ireland when uh, I think my second kid graduates from college. So let's say, mm. let's say five years. All right. We've got the five-year plan. Yes. I love it. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love it. All right. So I, I had to ask because we, we've got to be able to make sure that you get that done. And I know that you will. Yes. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Holly. Please. How can everybody find your book? How can everybody find you? Where do we get it? more information? Okay. My book is available on Amazon Prime, Sunrises and Sunsets, Final Affairs Forged with Flare Finesse and Functionality. And uh, it's uh, available there. It's also available on my website at the www.latter, L-A-T-T-E-R, lifeplanninginstitute.com. 
Fantastic. Fantastic. And of course, in the show notes as well. Holly, thank you so much for sharing so much information, so much wisdom, so much brilliance and guidance with us today. So appreciate you. Oh, I love the work you do. You know this, and I just think you're a rock star. Oh, thank you so much. I received that. I received that. Thank you. And to all of you out there, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. We hope you loved this episode. If you did, please download it, subscribe overall to the Purpose Girl podcast, rate it, review it, give us five stars. And of course, share this with the women in your life who need it with your grandmothers, with your mothers, with your aunts or aunts, however you say that word, we all say it differently. Please be sure that you are passing this information on. That is how we are going to change the world. One woman at a time. Of course, if you are not yet getting my newsletter and blog all about how to live your happiest life, how to live on purpose, you want to make sure that you go to PurposeGirl.com and download your free Living on Purpose guide. Also, of course, join the Purpose Girls Facebook group. Every Monday, this is a new thing. We're going to be adding and asking a question every single Monday to help you live a great week. So you want to find us there. And of course, you can follow me on Facebook, Coach Karen Rockhind, and on Instagram, Karen Rockhind. I love hearing from you. I love your emails. I love your messages. Please keep them coming. As always, may you live purposefully. May you love yourself. And may you love life. Bye for now.